Hello and welcome to our fourth lesson in this series. I'm glad you could join us again. In this lesson, we'll be looking at the courtyard and our high priest. The courtyard and our high priest. So far, we have established from the scriptures that God has a physical form, that he sits on a real throne, which is found in a real and literal temple in a real and literal location called heaven. We also established that the earthly sanctuary was a figure of the true sanctuary which is found in heaven and that just like the earthly sanctuary, the heavenly temple is made of two apartments, the holy and the most holy place. In this lesson, we want to see what the Bible has to say about the heavenly courtyard and whether we have a priest in heaven. Let us begin by looking at the courtyard. Does the heavenly temple have a courtyard? And if yes, where is it? If you remember in the previous lessons, we found out that some of the furniture items that were found in the earthly sanctuary are found in the heavenly sanctuary as well. Like the golden candlestick, Ark of the Covenant, and so forth. Well, what about the items that were in the earthly courtyard? What items did the earthly courtyard contain? Let us begin with the earthly courtyard and then we will see if we can find these items in heaven. As you walk into the outer perimeter of the sanctuary, you enter into what is called the courtyard. The first item we come across is the altar of burnt offering on which the offerings were burnt. And after that we find the laver containing water which the priests used to wash their hands and so on. It is interesting to note that none of these items are found in heaven. Nowhere in the scriptures do we read about a laver or an altar of burnt offering found in heaven. Well, where is the courtyard for the heavenly sanctuary then? If these items are not found in heaven, then what do they represent and where can we find the courtyard? If it is not in heaven, then where is it or what does it represent? A simple study of the earthly courtyard shows us that the heavenly courtyard is the earth where we live. Here are a few reasons why we believe so. The first reason is the earthly courtyard was the place where people or sinners could come in to present their offerings. According to Leviticus chapter 4 verse 27 to 29, no one other than the priest could enter the temple. In like manner, no sinner could go into heaven now to seek forgiveness for their sins. We do that through our prayers while we are here on earth. Only Jesus, our high priest, has entered the temple in heaven. Another reason is, while talking about the heavenly temple, John tells us in Revelation chapter 11 verse 1 and 2 that the court or courtyard is given unto the Gentiles. Hence, it cannot represent anything in heaven for the Gentiles or unbelievers will not be admitted there. Another reason is the courtyard was the place where the sacrifices and offerings were brought to and slain. This included the Passover lamb of which Jesus was the antitype. We read about Jesus, the lamb of God, the offering or sacrifice that God made for us that he is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, according to Isaiah chapter 53 verse 7. Where was Jesus offered as a sacrifice? Where was the lamb of God slain? It was here on earth, which is the courtyard of the heavenly sanctuary. It is the place where we are to offer our bodies as a living sacrifice, as Paul tells us in Romans chapter 12 verse 1 and 2. Another reason is, the courtyard is also the place where the sinner laid his hands upon the sin offering and killed it himself, symbolizing the transference of sin from the sinner unto the animal being slain in the courtyard. In like manner, it was on this earth where God laid upon Jesus the iniquity of us all, just like the sins were transferred to the sacrifice in the courtyard. And earth was also the place where we, sinners, have crucified Jesus 
by our sins according to Acts chapter 2 verse 36 just like the sinner himself slew the sacrifice in the courtyard another reason is the earthly courtyard was the place where God's fire consumed on the brazen altar the fat of the sin offering that symbolized or represented sin according to Leviticus 16 verse 25 it is also interesting to note that the fire on the altar of burnt offering was kindled by God himself you can see that in Leviticus chapter 9 verse 24 earth will be the place where God's fire will devour sin and all those who will hold on to it as the fat of the lamb notice these two verses talking about the time after the thousand years after the city descends from heaven and all the saints are in it we are told that Satan will be let loose and he will round his troops and all the wicked who did not make it to heaven and have been resurrected at that time Satan will round them up and the Bible says in Revelation chapter 20 verse 9 and they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about and the beloved city and fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them so just like the fire kindled by God devoured the fat which symbolized sin so will fire come down from God and devour sin and all those who are holding to it the Bible also tells us in Psalms chapter 37 and verse 20 but the wicked shall perish and the enemies of the Lord shall be as the fat of lambs they shall consume into smoke shall they consume away so the Bible likens the enemies of the Lord who will be consumed by fire to the fat of the lambs that was consumed by fire in the courtyard just like the fat of the lamb was consumed in the earthly courtyard so will the wicked be consumed in the heavenly courtyard which is planet earth where we live another reason is the courtyard contained in it the labor where the priests would wash according to Exodus chapter 30 verse 17 to 21 the earth is the place where Christians are supposed to receive the washing of generation and be washed with pure water as the Bible tells us it is the place where we are supposed to wash our robes as Revelation chapter 7 verse 14 says as you can see the things that happened in the earthly courtyard find their fulfillment in events that happens on the earth whether in the past present or future hence the heavenly courtyard represents the earth on which we live where the ultimate sacrifice was offered as our sacrifice Jesus had to come to the courtyard to be offered moreover as our high priest he would have to minister in both apartments to fulfill the type presented to us in the earthly sanctuary having fulfilled the type by being the Lamb of God will Jesus fulfill the role as a priest in the heavenly temple or in other words is there a priest in heaven this is an important question to ask because if there is a priest in heaven what we need to look at is is he fulfilling the same thing the type what the earthly priest fulfilled the answer is a definite yes yes we have a priest in heaven Jesus is our heavenly high priest we are told in the Bible that Jesus was made in all things like unto his brethren that he might be a merciful and a faithful high priest according to Hebrews chapter 2 verse 17 the scripture also says that he is our great high priest that is passed into the heavens that he is the son of God in Hebrews chapter 4 verse 14 it also tells us he is made a high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek we also read that he is able to save to the uttermost all those who come to God by him and that he ever liveth to make intercession for them the Bible also says that he is a minister of the sanctuary and of the true tabernacle which the Lord pitched and not man he is also set on the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heavens according to Hebrews chapter 8 verse 1 
As you can see, the Bible is very clear that Jesus is our high priest, that he has passed into the heavens. He is the minister of the sanctuary and the true tabernacle which the Lord pitched and not man. He is set on the right hand of the throne of God. Not only that, but our heavenly minister, our heavenly high priest, is able to succor them that are tempted because he himself has suffered being tempted, according to Hebrews chapter 2, verse 18. He is touched with the feeling of our infirmities and that he was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin, in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 15. The Bible also tells us that he is holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners and made higher than the heavens in Hebrews chapter 7 verse 26. Our heavenly high priest is able to succor or to help them that are tempted. He is able to help us much better than the earthly high priest was able to help those who came to him. Our heavenly high priest Jesus is holy, harmless, undefiled and separate from sinners and made higher than the heavens. That at his name, at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. What glorious news this is. This holy, undefined, unharmless Jesus that is made higher than the heavens is your very own high priest. And the Bible tells us, for every high priest taken from among men is ordained for men in things pertaining to to God. This means that every high priest, including our own heavenly high priest, is ordained for men or is given the position to take care of men or to act on behalf of men or to represent men before God. Think about it. This holy and undefiled Jesus, who is made higher than the heavens, who is on the right hand of God, is your own personal representative before God. He is working or acting on your behalf or for your very own interest before God. The ministry of our high priest in heaven is glorious news for us here on earth. He is truly able to help them that are tempted. So we saw very clearly from the Bible that the courtyard for the heavenly temple is the earth in which Jesus was the antitype of the sacrifices. He was the Lamb of God that was offered on the cross for our sins. But remember, according to the type in the earthly sanctuary, the sacrifice was the beginning of heaven-ordained steps that culminated or climaxed in the Day of Atonement. If you remember, after the sinner offered the sacrifice in the courtyard, the priest would take the blood of the Lamb into the holy place and then once a year, the high priest would go into the most holy place. Now the question that we need to ask ourselves is this. Is Jesus, our heavenly high priest, fulfilling the steps that the earthly high priest fulfilled in the earthly sanctuary? So far, we know that Jesus fulfilled the work that was to be done in the courtyard, namely the sacrifice. We also know that at his resurrection, Jesus moved from the courtyard into the heavenly temple, which the Lord pitched and not man. However, some questions still remain. Did Jesus, our mediator and high priest, anoint the heavenly sanctuary to mark the beginning of its ministration as Moses anointed the earthly sanctuary to mark the beginning of its ministration as well? Is Jesus, the second question is, is Jesus fulfilling what the priests did in the earthly sanctuary, namely taking the blood of the sacrifice into the holy place and then once a year on the day of atonement make an atonement for the sanctuary and for the people? In the coming lessons, we will address these questions and much more. But for now, Please join me as we close this session with a prayer. Our Father in heaven above, Lord, we are eternally thankful for the ministry of your Son Jesus in the heavenly sanctuary. 
We thank you, Father, that Jesus, your Son, who is holy and undefiled and separate from sinners, who is taken to heaven and sat on the right hand of your throne, O God, is our representative. He is ministering there on our behalf. Father, help us to believe this beautiful news. And I pray for everyone who is watching this presentation that you would bless them, you would give them deeper understanding, and you would help them to realize what Jesus is doing for them in the heavenly courts. Please keep us all until we meet again in our second lesson. Is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.